this morning potential new signs about what may have sparked Maui's devastating wildfires. This surveillance video from the night before showing a sudden flash, later turning into fire in the morning. It's windy and then there's a flash and I think right. that's when a tree is falling on a power line, the, the power goes out, our generator kicks in. The camera comes back online and then the forest is on fire. While the official cause of the island's blazes is still being investigated, data from Whisker Labs shows 34 major electrical incidents on the power lines around Lahaina that same night. There is video evidence of the very first fire starting in the middle of the island, uh, and we literally have coincident data, simultaneous data that shows an explosion on the grid. Hawaiian Electric didn't specifically address that data or the multiple lawsuits, but said in part, we know there is speculation about what started the fire, but the causes haven't been determined. With remains of more than 100 bodies recovered, most of them just ash, officials fear more than a 1,000 are still unaccounted for. Overnight, the names of three more victims released, all seniors, including 90-year-old Virginia Virginia Dofa. But as more of the victims' names are released, the latest briefing by authorities turning confrontational when they were questioned about their competency and transparency in the fire's aftermath. You can look here and see if you can trust me. As tensions rise, we're learning more about the victims who have not officially been named like Frank Trejos. Frank was escaping the blaze with his best friend, retired firefighter Jeff Bogar, when fire surrounded them. He said it was like laying on the ground with a flame torch going 80 miles an hour over the top of you. Jeff survived and later found Frank's body draped protectively over his beloved golden retriever, Sam. One sign of hope, the road to Lahaina now reopened, but the burn zone still off limits. We were granted rare access, recovery teams sifting through five square miles of rubble and dust. This is the area where the active search is underway. It's a shopping center with coffee shops where people may have been enjoying their day when the wildfire broke out. Mounting questions as families look for closure from the debris field that's also hallowed ground. The power company's CEO has also pushed back on criticism that the power company should have cut off electricity to the island as those wind speeds picked up and the fires first broke out. They have said that doing so could have caused some serious problems for people with medical issues who depend on power, as well as water pumps that are needed to be powered by electricity, Hoda. Oh, and well, on top of that, there were lots of concerns that residents had about the sirens, why sirens did not sound off when the fires broke out. And officials finally addressed that. What'd they say? Yeah, Hoda, county officials said that they did not sound the sirens because typically those are used for tsunami warnings, and that may have actually pushed people away from the coastline into the hills where the fire was burning. They say that would have been a major risk here. They stand by their decision as of now to not sound those sirens, Hoda. All right, Miguel Almaguer for us there in Maui. Miguel, thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.